What's up my boomers? It's me, Melanie Mac here on my new channel, Melanie Mac Go Boom. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. So, I want to talk about Perfect Dark because I I love Perfect Dark games. I mean, I really like the first one. Granted, Zero wasn't nearly as good, but I, you know, I still have a soft spot spot in my heart for it it's because I do like Joanna Dark in that game. So, yeah, uh, I've been really excited since they initially announced the Perfect Dark, uh, you know, the new Perfect Dark game reboot, whatever you want to call it. But after they shared that Crystal Dynamics is going to be a part of its production, uh, my expectations are quite frankly on the floor right now, but we'll see. I want to love Crystal Dynam Dynamics so much because I do enjoy the games that they make for what they are. But what I don't like is when they take something I already like and make it beyond recognizable so it's something completely different. That's my issue. And yeah, so I'm scared that that's going to happen with Perfect Dark and it looks like it's probably going to be the case, but we'll see. But first, let me go ahead and get into some like news that is relevant to this discussion. And then I do want to go down a trip uh, on Memory Lane. And just like, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that in a bit. So, first, let's read this. This is from VG or Video Games Chronicle. Uh, they said it looks like Perfect Dark has lost its game director, which that isn't always a good sign. <laughs> Uh, Dan Newberger is the initiative's second major design departure in a year, according to LinkedIn. Uh, okay. So it says, according to his LinkedIn profile, as spotted by Xbox sleuth, Clabril, Dan Newberger left the California-based studio last month. His profile page currently flags that he is looking for work elsewhere in design or director roles. Newberger had worked at the initiative for nearly four years and was previously a game director on the Tomb Raider series of Crystal Dynamics. See, this is why I told you my expectations are on the floor with what they're going to do to our girl, Joanna Dark. The same studio which is now collaborating on Perfect Dark. Yeah. The Perfect Dark director's exit marks at least the second major design departure on the project in the past 12 months, potentially more than a year ahead of the reboot's expected release. In February 2021, Perfect Dark's design director, Drew Murray, announced that he had left the initiative to rejoin his former employer, Insomniac Games. Murray cited personal reasons for his decision to leave. Murray and Newberger leave behind a veteran team of creatives established in 2018. The initiative is led by Daryl Gallagher, the former Activision development boss and head of Crystal Dynamics. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Developer of the Tomb Raider series. Since Perfect Dark's announcement in December 2020, the biggest news regarding the reboot has been that Marvel's Avengers and Tomb Raider developer Crystal Dynamics has been hired to help develop the project. In a statement last year, the initiative said, Perfect Dark update. We are partnering with Crystal Dynamics, the world-class team behind character-driven games such as Tomb Raider, to bring this first-person spy thriller to a new generation i.e. they're probably going to make it completely unrecognizable as Perfect Dark or and um, probably going to be a lot of uh, quick time events, set pieces, uh, scripted things, uh, dramatic stories, and uh, wokeified Joanna Dark. That's what I expect to see. Let's hope they prove me wrong. But let's go ahead and read some of the comments here on the twitter thread that talked about this because it did for this page get some good traction here uh pop says microsoft is the struggling to make bangers unlike sony okay interesting daniel says i don't get why they didn't just get rare to do it i mean they're the original creators of the ip let them reboot the series <laughs> now apart from the obvious here the current team are not the same people Rare kind of has crapped the bed uh, lately. I mean, let's not even talk about Battletoads, right? <laughs> I, d I don't think that would be uh, any better, to be honest. Incoming doom and gloom from people who don't know what they're talking about, says the Xbox post. Looking at how Crossfire and Halo Infinite turned out, you guys have every right to be worried. AD says. So yeah, this has people... uh very skeptical now i kind of want to go down on the memory lane just you know for fun reasons for those who like perfect dark and if you're not familiar with perfect dark hey you know this is a little chance to take a look at joanna dark and what we can expect now as you can see she was a very feminine 
hot character. But at the same time, I think all things considered for the time, especially, she was considered more of the practical type. She doesn't have unrealistic proportions. Um, she actually looks, you know, she looks for what the graphical capabilities were at the time, like more like a realistic woman, but she was still hot. Like she still, look at her. And what I like about the, her character design and what they've done with her is that she has, you know, she has the pixie cut. And I know now that they're doing like, when they do a lot of the cropped, really short hair, they kind of do so in a masculine way. And the thing that's unfortunate about that is it's making the internet meme short hair a lot on women, like the pixie cuts, the like really short hair. But dude, at the time, you look at like the 90s and early 2000s and stuff, girls would rock that. Or even look at like Catwoman, for example. I mean, girls could rock that that very short haircut and still be very feminine and gorgeous. And I do like how she had that. And so her vibe was just that tough chick, man. Like that that tough but feminine femme fatale type. But without going crazy with the ex exaggerations. Now, after... So after they... Right in between like... Before they started Perfect Dark Zero, they were going to do something slightly different. I mean, not even slightly. They are going to do something different with the art direction here, which ended up not happening, obviously. But this is like the cutesy, almost Betty Boop style Joanna Dark. I do remember being a little bummed they didn't go with this because I do think like a stylized thing would work great. Because even if you look at Joanna here, she's got that hot sexy woman but she's also got a cuteness to her and i like that that cute but hot woman and this totally works for this kind of style and i'm a i'm a fan of it i think that this actually could have really worked she's oozing confidence like she is here as well and i like that uh now obviously perfect dark zero we got uh this which to me i i also really like this i think this is a good I think it's a really good design. I'm a big fan of this design. I, 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 I liked it ever since it first came out. And then, you know, this outfit, which I love. Because y'all know I'm a little biased. I like tomboy vibes. So, <laughs> I'm a big fan of the aesthetic here. I do think that original Joanna Dark is my favorite. But, all things considered, I did really like her design in Zero. Uh, but still. Now, what we're seeing with the, what we, the little bit. This was when they announced it. You can't really get that much of a vibe here just from her right here. But I'm not, I'm not totally sure we're going to get that sassy, spunky, sexy, cutesy Joanna Dark here. I'm not, I'm not getting that vibe. I'm getting kind of generic, generic uh, female lead character. And look at here again, like it's just every single one of these older pictures of Joanna Dark, even the ones I didn't use are very recognizable, but they're also memorable, okay? Even with the more, you know, they didn't have to do these crazy, super exaggerating. They didn't have to make her waist like this small. I do like whenever they do exaggerate proportions on characters sometimes, but they didn't have to. She is still very memorable like this. And to see this... <laughs> The, the, the Karen haircut. I like the cropped haircut. Trust me. I like the pixie cut we see here. But there's a difference between sassy, spunky pixie cut and soccer mom. And look at this outfit. It's literally... It's... Oh, hold on. This is my comments. It's literally the same outfit Lyra Croft wears in Rise of the Tomb Raider. And not only that, but it almost looks like they maybe adjusted her character model a little bit to be the same. Because they made Lyra's legs very short in uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider and Shadow. And it's like... I don't know what it is with wokeifying characters, but, you know, not only is... It, okay, big boobs aren't allowed, but apparently long legs aren't either. And nothing wrong with short legs. They can be really cute. Okay, I mean, even if you look at, I don't know, her legs are short, but still, like, they weren't exactly as long as, like, here, for example. You don't have to go with that long, long, long legs, but, I mean, they, there was a deliberate effort here to make her not sexy, 
not not that traditionally like sexified hot character that she looked before yeah so we'll see we'll see but even with these proportions it could work if they gave her depending on how they style her her outfit her hair her demeanor if she just had she could work it it's just hard to see that when it's just this basic generic npc looking design now these are very early on we'll see what we what we get later but i'm expecting more or less this realistic grounded this this is just what i'm expecting which is unfortunate when they're taking some of the most iconic female characters and, you know, giving them the NPC treatment. But I'm curious to see what y'all think in the comments. I know some people are all about this. Like, some people love it. They love it. And not even just girls. Like, some dudes are like, oh, yeah, I don't want to. But, like, for some reason, they almost feel guilty playing games as a, as a hot girl. They, they want to just the basic make-unders. They love it. I don't know. And again, you know, like I said earlier too, is is someone like with these proportions and stuff, they could still work it. They could still make it work. Like the original, she isn't, she looks kind of short, which is, you know, short girls can be hot too. But it's just, you don't have the attitude. You don't have the vibe. It's not there. It's just not. It's just very serious, stoic NPC. <sighs> So, we'll see what happens. Well, let me go ahead and read some comments from my recent videos. Darth Khan says, Played Tomb Raider 2 Golden Mask recently. Took me a while to play it because for a long time, the prospect of no cutscenes at all just sounded horrible to me. But it's really good. As good, if not better, than Tomb Raider 2 level design-wise. Now, this is a thing about any game that I say. Because when I made my, my tweet, that went viral and got a lot of backlash. People thought I was hating on narrative-based and story-based games in general or cutscenes in general when I'm not. But what I'm saying and what my opinion is, is if your game, think about a game that you want to play, that you like to play. Would that game be good? And would that game be playable if it had zero cutscenes? If the answer is no, then it's a crappy game. With some exceptions, I mean, and you have games like Life is Strange that is completely reliant on story. But even then, as much as I do enjoy those games, I play them once and I'm done. Uh, so yeah, to me, when you really get down to the nitty gritty of what makes a good game, the game should be good on its own without the cutscenes. Cutscenes should be bonus. And the thing I love about classic Tomb Raider is that when you got cutscenes, it was a reward. <laughs> it wasn't just spammed on you. And it wasn't, like, the only thing keeping you playing. The gameplay was good. And, yeah. So, like, in this case, with Golden Mask, you didn't have to have cutscenes. You can, It's just a great game. It's a great game. Period. Or a level. So, Jenny says, Is that interlock on her right arm just above the elbow? Uh, I'm looking at my wrong arm. <laughs> This is Katakana, and it says Gojira, or Godzilla. That was, uh, yeah. But, thank you for noticing. Uh, okay, so Bluesh says, Can you use boomies instead of boomers or something? I don't know, but I just found you today, and it feels like I entered a viewer base full of oldies. I get this channel is new, so hopefully you open to changing things up a bit. Okay, boomer. <laughs> I don't know how many times I have to, like, clarify this. It's a play on words with Melly Mac go boom. And also, here's the thing, is a lot of my videos are very, like, anti-woke. Because in general, I'm a very anti-woke movement. And what offends woke people more than anything? Words. So, that's just jarring to me if you'd subscribe to me if you're offended by the word boomer. <laughs> this is my thing, and that's something that, like, woke people like to call people who don't adapt to every new thing they invent. Whether that be through vernacular or anything else. Because woke people are constantly changing definitions of things. They're constantly making stuff up that we're just supposed to accept off the bat. And they use the word boomer on us when we're not up with their times a lot of times. So to me, it's like, okay, well, why not just own it? All right, sure, I'm a boomer. Great. <laughs> 
Am I in real life? No, I'm a millennial, but sure, you can call me boomer. Get over it. <laughs> Rabbit Inspector says, better to be right with God than society. So freaking true. And that's always a reminder. To, when I, I have to remind myself of that when I have to deal with hate all the time. King Beef says, someone saying classic Tomb Raider controls are bad is bizarre to me. The best thing about classic Tomb Raider is that the controls were so good. They were completely consistent and perfectly responsive. Lara did exactly what you demanded every time. Every death was down to the player, not the control issue. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! I am so, I just scared my cat. <laughs> I am so tired. I am like sick of it when people complain about classic Tomb Raider controls. There was a fundamental element of the gameplay. So if you don't like the controls, you don't like classic Tomb Raider. Because that's how you play the game. That's like whenever the controls are changed to auto grab, then you just completely change the whole dynamic of the game. Okay. Uh, more than, you know, as much as, as puzzles and exploration and all that are pillars of classic Tomb Raider, the absolute biggest thing with any classic Tomb Raider game is the, the, the platforming, essentially, okay? And navigating traps, navigating platforming, ca calculating your jumps, that is the most biggest pillar of Tomb Raider's gameplay. And so when you take that away and you babyfy it and you make it all like super simple. Now, if you're talking about Angel of Darkness, okay, we could talk. That's a different story because Angel of Darkness did have a lot of issues with its controls. But actual Tomb Raider 1 through 5, it was a grid-based game uh, in terms of like um, engine. And so your jumps and all that, you had to calculate. I mean, you it's its quite simply part of the game. So that's like saying, you know, Dark Souls would be good if it wasn't for the stamina bar. Dude. <laughs> or Halo would be good if it wasn't for it being a shooter. Like, this is the fundamental part of the game. So it's one of those things. It's like, like you said, when you die, it's your fault. It's not because, oh, the auto grab didn't detect that I was supposed to snap to that ledge. No, it's your fault. You miscalculated your jump or your reaction time was off. Get good, scrub. Literally, like, thank you. <laughs> All right, Egg Chin says, I know I've commented twice on this already, but one last thing. You are an incredibly strong woman, and thank you. <laughs> and I admire that about you. They just keep coming after you and keep coming after you, and you are still going strong, and there's a lot of people that are on your side. Yeah, we all take some heat, but not like you do. You are out there on the front lines taking it firsthand, and I know I can be difficult, but here you are, or or I, I know it can be difficult, but here you are still smiling and giving hope to me. And I'm sure others as well. I appreciate you. Thank you. That's so nice of you to say. Because I do feel like I'm on the firing range all the time. All the time. I'm like, dude. Like that last backlash I got for talking about my opinion on video games. <laughs> I'm like, when am I going to catch a break from this hate mob? I'm, you're just, that's the thing is you're not allowed to have opinions on the internet. Drunk3PO says, if people are trying to destroy you, that means you're doing something right and speaking truth. I stand with you, with you, truth teller. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Shadow says, that tweet of how, is how I found this channel, lol. I don't know if they meant, like, my tweet talking, the, the one that went viral, or if they're talking about that tweet that somebody used to try to cancel me with, with the made-up racist stuff that I didn't say. <laughs> I think if it was the latter, then that's hilarious if it actually got followers for me. Because, <laughs> I mean, everybody knows they were fake. Ethan says, people are mad because Elden Ring is one of the best games that has ever been made. Great story, great exploration, great difficulty, and amazing bosses. Haters are going to hate. Exactly right. I, I agree. Logan says, uh, quoting my video, I like anime better than most anything we see on TV. You've got yourself a subscriber, sister. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you uh, understand where I'm coming from there. So let me go ahead and go into the verse of the day. I may have used this before. I know I've at least shared it on my Instagram stories before, but I wanted to bring it up again because it did, you know, it did speak to me again with a lot of recent things. But then also, uh, as I've looked more into it, instead of just that one singular verse, it 
brought a lot more perspective to me as well, and it, and it gives it more meaning to me as well. So let me go ahead and read this. It's 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 through 8. It says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Now, initially, when I, you know, read this, my thought is, okay, well, you know, people like to look at Christians as, as we're supposed to be pushovers. And people treat us like this because they, if they don't like what we have to say or we disagree with them or whatever, they just want us to be shut up and be pushovers. And that's not how Christians were called to be. If you just look at Jesus' example, Jesus was not a pushover. He told it like it was, and he did, was not afraid to snap back at some Pharisees or peeps in general uh, when it when the time came for it. I mean, chasing people in the, with a whip and, and uh, pushing over tables and stuff like that. I mean, and Jesus, Jesus never sinned. He was well within his right to do so. So... Yeah, that just showing by Jesus's example, like, dude, we're not supposed to be these soy boys and girls. Like, we are supposed to be strong. And there's so many times, like, the Bible tells us, be strong, be strong and courageous, be strong. You know, don't be a wuss, essentially. And so, yeah, that definitely is true. But I think beyond that, and, and what we see in context here is that also, don't be so timid about our faith. And I get backlash sometimes for reading Bible verses on my videos. And, you know, I'm not, I, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. This is my faith. This is my belief system. And I'm, I'm, I shouldn't be apologetic about sharing this kind of stuff. And I won't be. <laughs> it, it, and, and a lot of Christians, I feel like, are scared to. And I've been there, too. I've been there too where I've been scared to because of the backlash. You will get backlash. The world will hate you. A lot of society will hate you if you're a Christian. It's in the Bible. It says it'll happen. And it does. And that's another reason why I'm just like, these th these haters, they prove the Bible right so many times. Time and time again, they prove the Bible right. And that's one way that they do. <laughs> it's like, you have a target on your back if you're a Christian. You just do. It's part of it. But, hey, it's worth it. All right, so there you have it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And in the meantime, go boom.